There is a surplus of tax. This is extraordinary, given the fact that uh, our economy is in such a mess. Uh, so the Office of National Statistics has shown that uh, although we've got a recession, although inflation is going up, although public services are not functioning, the government has actually taken more tax than it needs to. And there was a, uh, there, there was a sort of um, overreach, an overshot, a, a surplus of 16.7 billion in January. So there was more tax than spending. That means that uh, despite all the bad news, the Chancellor actually has about 15, 000, uh, 15 billion pounds of headroom, enough to provide some sort of glittery tax cut in the budget which is really what he wants. But would it be the right thing to do? Uh, you know, what sort of message does that send out should he do it? The fall in inflation, is there a fall in inflation? It's questionable. Uh, is there a national debt? Yes, that continues to increase. It, it, that, and the national debt at the moment, I think, is 96.7% of gross national product. Uh, that's, um, up, uh, uh, that, that, that's up over 1%, 1 nearly 2% since last year, since January last year. So in one year, it's gone up 2%. And the borrowing figures that we've, that we've now got will be the last before the March the 6th budget. Uh, but it gives it gives the Chancellor some sort of leeway to make a tax cut. Now, as I, I come back to the main issue, is it morally right for the Chancellor to make a tax cut at this particular time when there are pressures uh, from our public services, when the NHS is in trouble? Do we... Do we um, uh, give that money back to the taxpayers? Uh, do we invest that money in public services? Do we admit that we were wrong and we've been charging too much tax? That's another, that's another route down, uh, down which we could go. Uh, I think the chances are that there's going to be a modest tax cut and this is going to be celebrated by the a conservative right wing but it's not going to be anything to make any any big difference and in other words we will, we will see lots of noise and no real improvement it's not that we're going to see uh 15 billion going into the national health service or 15 billion going into sort out teaching um and on that subject of sorting out teaching there's been lots of uh interesting comments since i made comments yesterday about tuition uh, it doesn't matter really at the moment how much money you put into state education is not going to improve it's not about the money invested in the schools or the education the schools need money uh, simply to repair the fabric the, uh, the the only way to improve education across our state system is to improve the training of teachers and at the moment we're starting with uh, we're, we're, we're encouraging uh, people without degrees to go into training we're encouraging people to go into schools without training and so on and uh, there's a lot to be said for an enthusiastic teacher even with even with um, poor degree results and so on there's a lot to be said. Uh, however, the quality of teaching in, in state schools uh, won't improve in the immediate future, if that's the problem. In terms of textbooks and resources, something can be done there. 
But the idea that state schools are significantly worse than private schools is also untrue. Uh, some of the private schools that I've been into have been appalling. Um, and you wonder why on earth parents are paying for that sort of education. I've picked up a few, um, a few students from private schools uh, for English and, uh, and a May, again, I'm appalled at how little they've been taught in the advance of GCSEs or A-levels or whatever they're doing, 11 plus. And if they haven't been taught these things, how on earth are they expected to get a decent result? And of course, uh, the school records quite poor results, but the parents continue to pay because there's an idea that private education is somehow a better quality than state education. It's simply not true. It's simply not true. It's a different form of education. Um, what we need is a, a basic platform of solid teaching, uh, a basic platform of solid learning throughout the system. And destroying one system doesn't automatically improve the other. In the past, before the 1960s, the state education was modelled largely on the best of the private education. Now we've got almost to the other way round, where teacher training has dictated that there is a format for teaching, and that format is not good. That format is largely based on the theories of Piaget and Vygotsky. Vygotsky was a fellow who taught in my own university. And though those theories were based on the observations and experiments with nursery school children, which were then projected upwards. And it doesn't work. Experiential learning is okay um, as a concept. But in the end, when you come to GCSEs and A-levels and university, you've actually got to get the information. Now, it doesn't have to come from the teacher. And that's where the change uh, could take place. That information could come from a variety of places, including the internet. But while we have teacher-driven classes, we assume that information comes from the teacher, and the teacher is ill-placed to provide that, and particularly ill-suited to provide it when the principle is that children are learning by experience. There's an element of instruction, and quite an important element of instruction, which gets bigger as you move through the school and educational system. So how do you filter that element of instruction into your lessons in a way that works? And how do you bridge that gap between GCSEs and A-levels? So some people teach A-levels as if they're sort of super GCSEs, which they're not. They're actually mini-versions of the university course. So the best way, I think, forward is to find a, a route to inject internet content into a school curriculum. And what is extraordinarily ironic is this is something that was trialled in the early 1960s using radio and then television and seems to have been almost completely abandoned. So we need to we need to go back to the 1960s and then move forward if we're going to have any hope in education. Meanwhile, what should the Chancellor do with the money that he's got in his pocket? I think he should give it back. And... Uh, and, and I think he should do so in such a way that it doesn't please the right wing of the Conservative Party. I think it should be invested. I think it should be invested where it will help.